Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another one of our MAG Meet the Specialist sessions. These little short introductory sessions have proved to be a great success with people watching them as a really great way of getting to know our new specialists or specialists that they didn't know themselves to see what that person is really like in the flesh, so to speak. Today, we are joined with by psychiatrist Dr. Yu Teng Shen who has been with us for just a little while, but um, we're very, very proud to have him on the panel. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Dr. Shen. You can tell our people a little bit about yourself um, so that they have confidence in booking with you, just like we have in having you on our panel. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Um, hello, my name is Yutang Shen. I'm a psychiatrist based in Sydney. I'm working in South Sydney in Hurstville. Um, I'm based in a private uh, hospital at the moment. Um, covering both inpatient and outpatient uh, private work, as well as medical legal work. Um, I've been a psychiatrist for seven years, uh, finishing training in 2017. Um, my training has mainly been based in Southeast Sydney, in the Eastern suburbs for much of the time. And in terms of my work experience, um, until recently, was predominantly in public, so I've worked mainly in acute psychiatry and old age psychiatry. So my subspecialty by training is old age psychiatry, including dementia assessment and treatment, as well as uh, psychotherapy. Um, so mainly dealing with PTSD and mood disorders. But I've transitioned into uh, private practice more so over the past few years, uh, dealing mainly with uh, still depression, anxiety, and more ADHD, autism, uh, and intellectual disabilities, as well as some dementia assessment, and moving into the medical legal space, which was introduced to me by a colleague um, in my early years. And so I've just been gradually working uh, with more medical legal assessments over the years. I've worked with a few different um, um companies or outfits over the years and uh, just, you know, um, testing my mettle with uh, medical legal work. And I've also worked as a medical legal assessor or medical assessor for the Personal Injury Commission over the past uh, couple of years now. And I, I was just counting and I think I've done over 300 cases with them so far. So it's been quite a ride, pretty exponentially good training experience working with them because often there's a lot of um, um, appeals uh, with the appeals process and you do get very uh, good feedback from uh, the learned colleagues and both from the legal colleagues and psychiatry colleagues who can give really incisive feedback sometimes which um, has sharpened my medical legal acumen. Uh, I've done a few uh, medical legal courses with uh, the Australian College of Legal Medicine, as well as a few other training courses. Um, so that's also helped with my medical legal thinking process, as well as writing. Um, and so at the moment, I'm doing regular medical legal work, still as a medical assessor for Personal Injury Commission and uh, starting um, work with you guys now. Fantastic. That's great. Um, I was interested when you spoke about um, uh, dementia or, or mental health for the elderly, which is what you were, were exposed to in, in some of your, your training and early practice. And also you mentioned PTSD. Those are things that we see in the medico-legal context quite a lot. Um, and they're often secondary injuries to to another event. So, for example, to a catastrophic workplace accident or a motor vehicle accident or something like that. Has that been your experience that they have predominantly been a, a secondary uh, injury? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that is one of the um, domains in the uh, PERS is assessing the concentration and persistence of pace. Uh, and so the cognitive changes is somewhat associated with that domain or subdomain. Um, in general, it um, uh, cognitive difficulties can arise with any mental co conditions, including depression, anxiety, PTSD, or brain injury. Um, and you do see that quite acutely in the acute setting. 
But even if someone goes into remission, you still see some residual um, effects afterwards too. Mm -hmm. There's also, I suppose, there's also the context um, in which people are being assessed and their self-reporting, which may or may not um, correlate well with more objective testing. Um, and I do do some bedside test of attention, concentration, and um, performance as well. Although I, I find that there's um, there's ways around that without having to do a formal test or refer out to a formal or formal assessment. Um, but I've had to read quite a bit of neuropsychological assessments over the years, so I'm fairly familiar with them. Um, they don't happen often enough unfortunately, but I think it'd be helpful to have it more of it, especially if there's any significant head injuries or knocks to the head. You do get to see them a lot with the motor vehicle accidents, um, obviously because there's um, head injuries that happen quite a lot. And um, I haven't had too many catastrophic work-related head injuries come my way. It's been mainly the motor vehicle that's come out yeah. with the head injuries so far. Yeah. Right. A quick question I wanted to ask you again on the subject of the PTSD. Um, obviously, mm. we see a, a great deal of PTSD in the medico-legal sphere, and particularly when we talk at, about first responders, police, um, fires, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. Um, and I notice in my reading as a, as a layperson, a lot of change in the way that PTSD is recognised and treated and a change to the perception that in the olden days, a diagnosis of PTSD was "thanks for coming, you'll never work again." But that we're actually rec recognizing. Am I correct in saying that that if a person is not in the triggered environment, that they can actually successfully move away from that PTSD? Mm, yeah, um, PTSD is a pretty multifaceted mental condition and injury. And it can manifest in various different ways and impair people in uh, quite a few different domains. Some people recover quite well. Other people are debilitated for many, many years. Um, and the trajectory of recovery is different for everyone. Um, so it, it is a bit hard to say, but some people can recover now. And yeah. there's more treatments now available to them. So it does increase the rate of recovery. Um and um, there's, you know, specific therapies like trauma-focused CBT or EMDR. Um, and there is some evidence for antidepressants. Um, there's a few other medications specific for um, certain symptoms like nightmares. There's a couple of different medications for that. bit of evidence for TMS as well. Mm -hmm. And um, on the horizon are the psychedelic associates. Uh, assisted psychotherapy, um, especially MDMA. So that's been proved under very strict conditions for treatment of PTSD. Watch um, that space. <laughs> exactly okay. right. So yeah. if you had to say of all of the work that you've done so far in the medico legal space, some, you know, some 300 plus assessments, not that this is something, favourite is probably the wrong word, but is there a type of assessment that that you, you find more fulfilling or enjoyable or interesting to, to work on just out of interest? Um, the interesting ones are the more complex and hard work ones, to be honest. Um, they tend to be around the, you know, somatoform or functional neurological disorder. Um, there's been a couple of complex cases where there's pre-existing issues in that area. Mm -hmm. And it's just trying to tease out what happens or what's come before and how much has changed and yep. wading through all the evidence, almost like a detective. Um, so yeah. I, I think that's been quite interesting, although it does take a lot of intense reading and sustained attention to try and synthesise yeah. all the information. That but, is definitely um, true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you are consulting, uh, if, you, if you took appointments or assessments through us, you would see them face-to-face -face in your Hurstville rooms? Yes. Mm. I can Lovely. or I can do telehealth as well. Or telehealth, you know. of course. Oh, that's great. Um, wondering if anyone else here has a question. Ken, perhaps, do you have a question to ask of Dr. Shen? No. That, that is great. Look, 
These little vignettes, as I said before, are a really terrific way for our clients to get to know our specialists. So today you've met the very lovely Dr. Yu Tang Shen, psychiatrist who is available to book through the MAG Cowacon platform or, of course, by calling our friendly team anytime. And we look forward to seeing you again. Perhaps you'll do a seminar for us on a topic that is close to your heart or areas of interest at some stage. Thank you so much, Dr. Shen. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Michelle. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.